Mark Jeffries, and Matt Pangrak. BTL is brought to you by Lawrence. Lose. Strike King Lures. Bass Cat Boats. Ducket Fishing. Spro. Apco. Sunline. And TH Marine. BTL coming at you. Good Monday, everybody. Welcome once again to BTL Bass Talk Live, where we're going to talk bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Yes, it is a holiday. It's President's Day. I don't have class today, Matthew, and I'm so excited. That's with with the hat and the hoodie then, instead of the sweater vest and the combed hair. Exactly. Well, congratulations exactly. on your day off on a yes. Monday morning. Yeah, good shows this week lined up. We're going to have Chris Zaldane on here in about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, did you watch any television over the weekend there, Matthew? Or were no. you too busy out slaying crappie? I'm officially off the band. I'm officially off. What is that? Off the wagon? What what is it when you like are reformed and then you are not reformed anymore? You go back and do what you said you weren't gonna do. What is that called, Mark? You uh, fell off the wagon. Yeah. I fell off the wagon. You're I an went, addict. I went crappie fishing twice this weekend. I did set a new personal best. Of which two seventy five. It's a That's two a and three one. three quarter pound crappie. That's a big one. So that'll be out. So that'll be uh, in a, in a, a week. We'll be out. That crappie fishing adventure will be out on the BTL YouTube uh, channel under the Panger 2020 tab. Yeah. Uh, and then tomorrow, the behind the scenes uh, from when Jimmy Houston and Chris Prather were in studio will drop, which leads me to a really good segue on Wednesday's guest. Yeah, we're going to have Matt Heron on along with Chris Prather, who's going to be live via the phone. He's going to try and do Skype, but he's actually competing again in a weird format, Matthew. I don't know why they do this, but three PBA majors in a row. This week, it's the U.S. Open in Lincoln, Nebraska, of which I got to mention this. I received several emails from people in the Nebraska area, specifically the Lincoln area, Matthew, that are going to go watch as a result of us having Prather on the show. Wow. Well, I'm glad Bowling's the only sport that sticks to weird <laughs> formats, and there's no other <laughs> weird formats in any of the stuff that we talk no. about. So, so. Uh, we're going to have Matt Heron and Chris Prather on Wednesday, and then Tuesday, a show I'm looking forward to, Kyle Welcher, whose story is fascinating to You're me. You're intrigued by this guy. Yeah. He is... Uh, he is your Miles Berghoff for 2020, it sounds like. Maybe. Could be. The dude is a professional poker player. He goes to Vegas for four months at a time. He goes to Florida. He goes all over the nation. When he's not fishing, he's playing professional poker. And he's not playing tournaments. He's playing cash games. To make money. To make money. Not just because he enjoys the deal. It's like what he does to make his money. This is what he does. This, this is, is a man his... after my own heart. <laughs> So, uh, very, very good show uh, today, tomorrow, and then on Wednesday. Looking forward to having Matt and, and Chris on the show. All right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is President's Day, and I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to put you on a spot, Matthew. Oh, God, Matthew. I hope this isn't history. All right. Not a good history guy, huh? I mean, I'm not bad. Who was I the did. first president of the United States? George Washington. Okay. Who was the second John Quincy Adams? Uh, very nice. Can you name the third? Thomas Jefferson? Oh, dude, you're rocking. Is I'm that right? stopping there, yeah. Yeah, I, this is, I don't have anything in <laughs> no. front of me. You're rocking it. Okay. I like it. Well, I, I feel like history is important. You look back, I, I look at the history of bass fishing a lot. Yeah. Because a lot of times history could dictate what's in the future. I think it's important to have a solid base of what yeah. you're going on, so... Yeah, we well, never was, talk politics. Was that, on those the show. were your questions? Oh yeah, we're not going to talk politics. Okay. I just wanted to know if you knew who the first three presidents of the United States were. I really feel like I could have gotten some additional Chick Fil A, perhaps a lure <laughs> out of that bet, because I think you would have felt pretty safe that I would not have known I, the first I, three presidents I, off the top of my head. You're dead on. I had no idea. I, I, I didn't did know not either. Have a lot of it just kind of came out of me. 
<laughs> wow, I, dude, I am impressed. Seriously, I'm like floored that you knew that. I mean, you know a lot of information, but a lot of it is useless information. Did you Google that to make sure it's right? No, but I, I, I'm feeling very confident. You are a teacher. A, yeah, that, that is correct. All right, here's something else that, that I don't know, and maybe somebody out there, and I'm kind of embarrassed that I don't know this, and I never really thought about it because by the time that I get to school, I, I don't get to school till 11.20. My first class isn't until 11.20. Do they still say the pl Pledge of Allegiance? I believe that that is uh, on a case-by-case Really? School by school. Okay. I, 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 don't I don't know. I don't really? know. Really? I have no idea. Anyway. anyway. Guess what? Uh, somebody is saying that it was John Adams, not John Quincy Adams. Oh, well. Well, okay, excuse, then. sorry. My bad. <laughs> I, I'll still give it up to you, though, on that. Uh, we have one derby in the books for each of the what, three tours now, if you want to throw the FLW and they're getting ready mm -hmm. for their next stop in Florida. But uh, the BPT, the Elite Series, and the FLW Tour all have a tournament under their belts, and it was an absolute <laughs> runaway on Ufala in Alabama with Jacob Wheeler getting yeah. on an every cast deal and putting the hurt into him to... Everybody else wasn't. ...dinged his way to the win, Mark. I, I What can you say about the guy? I, seriously, it, it, it's an incredible run. He continues to win tournament after tournament. He continues to just blow away the field yeah. in some of these events. And it's quite remarkable. And folks, I've told you this before. If you're bored out of your mind and you're a statistical guy, go back, look at the stats for Kevin Van Dam in his early years. And then compare him to Jacob. And then compare those stats to Jacob Wheeler and your mind will explode how much better from a performance standpoint that Jacob Wheeler has been than Kevin Van Dam. Now, I do have, uh, if you remember last week, we got, I went on a little rant about the anglers who won each of their first two rounds. Then they've got the day off, so they don't get to <laughs> be on the water and know exactly what's going on. They don't get yeah. to add to their big fish total. Yeah, I'm 50-50 on this now. Because I know the anglers are okay about this because they had to vote for it. But yeah. obviously, Thrift, two days off the water. Wheeler, a day off the water. Did not affect them at all. They no. finished 1-2. They were the round leaders. Yeah. Wheeler, however, his big bass is less than five pounds for the event. And the day off, there were two eight-pounders and three others over six, I believe, that were caught. Yeah. So it did, I personally think, affect him in the heavy hitters, but obviously not overall hang as on the a two second. round winners. Well, let me ask you this, because I'm hoping that you will know this. The guys that caught the eight-pounders, did they make the cut? Do you know uh, that off the top of your head? I don't know that off the top of my head. See, because the point I'm trying to make here is, is your focus on catching the biggest fish or is your focus on winning the event? I got you. I'm not trying to get into an argument today. I was just saying, I no, was, I was saying that I obviously did not affect those two no. where I said, well, how are they going to find the fish after they've been off the water for two days? Not Mark. at all. But Wheeler also doesn't have a giant one in the days that the biggest ones bit. I mean, there weren't any eight pounders caught in the other five days of competition yeah. and on the day that those two were all, uh, and off the water there were two eight pounders caught so obviously the stars were aligned something so was, did those guys make the cut i want to see if you can find that out I I can't maybe in the break who. maybe in the break yeah jordan lee i know he had one he had, he one, had one and he's he finished at ninth in the tournament i can't remember yeah. who had the other one but still the easy fix i think we both agree the easy fix is what uh, just the first two days exactly. for the heavy hitters. Exactly. I believe it like it is for the Elite Series for the first two. But anyway, yeah. so I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of not taking it back, but obviously it didn't affect them in this <laughs> in this instance. I, and things were changing a lot. Water drop and clarity more yeah. whole ninth and yards. So. Yeah. So uh, this week, stop number two, practice starts on Wednesday. And uh, I, I was on the phone last night for, I don't know, good little while with Takahiro Omori. Really? Because I was trying to get Tak booked on the show. He's never been on the show. And he had a good first tournament. And uh, he's been doing this gig for a long, long time, Matthew, as you know. And I just I wanted to pick his brain, see uh, how 
he was thinking going into the second year of the BPT, his his performance at the SJR was outstanding, and just kind of get his thoughts on the remainder of the year. So we're going to have talk on uh, later after this event, and then hopefully things will work out with his schedule and we'll go from there. Because you know where the third stop is for the BPT? It's at Lake Fork. Yeah, he's from around there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to throw a name out at you. All right. And I want to see if this ring... Did. Anthony Sharp. No. No idea. I'll give you several clues here. BFL. Sam Rayburn. I don't know. February 15th. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. Anthony Sharp in the BFL on Rayburn on February 15th from Village, Saturday. Village Mills, Texas, weighed in a five bass limit. We'll do the dick guessing game. How much? Do you 30 think pounds. No, higher. 35? Higher. 40? 40 pounds, six ounces to win the BFL and $7,000 on Sam Braybird. Roughly 200 boats in this Wow. Thing. Second place. Let's start guessing weights. 35. Again. Lower. 30. Lower. 25? Lower. 20? Lower. 19-1. Holy moly. He was on to something. 19-1 <laughs> <laughs> for second for Randy Deaver. And Anthony Sharp weighed in 40 pounds, 6 ounces for a BFL winning weight of 19, 29, 39. 40 pounds? Roughly a 21-pound victory in a BFL. <laughs> <laughs> Did he talk about it? I have uh, not yeah, seen uh, this. Over on FLW, there's a, a little bit of... of uh, article he, he said uh, i'll be honest when the tournament director set the stack up there i thought i was praying that i had mid 30s i've had a couple 30 pound limits up here never in a tournament when it said 40 i could hardly answer his questions and i kind of got flushed <laughs> the dude had 40 pounds for crying yeah. out loud they are uh, were some biggins so did he talk about how he caught him he said he he uh, found a a classic offshore area that topped out in 20 feet and uh, that's all he needed. He said he found him, and uh, he said uh, he backed off him. I think this is, yeah, during practice. He saw the school. He eased up to him on the trolling motor. He said, quote, I was still 100 yards from my waypoint. On my very first cast, I caught an 806. So he knew that it was. Wow. That's got to be the largest margin of victory in a BFL. Ah, it's what I was trying to find. I, I don't know. I don't know how to find that, to be honest. With I don't you. think they keep those records. But, but if they did, he's uh, he's got the trophy and a beard that, that rivals Buddy Grosses. So. <laughs> Forty freaking pounds. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. No. Now I know who the dude is. Jeez. Wow, 40 pounds. All right, I want to let everybody know I've received several emails uh, wanting to know if we were going to the Bassmaster Classic, and we need to let everybody know, yes, we're going to be there. In fact, we're going to have a little BTL get-together. For those people that are planning on attending the Bassmaster Classic, uh, what we're going to do is Matt and I are actually going to be in the AFCO booth mm -hmm. on Saturday from noon to two to just kind of hang out and uh from what i understand our man dave rush is going to put together some kind of special package or something where people I, can come by and buy certain things at a btl rate i don't i yeah that's not that's out of my that's above my pay yeah. grade, mark so, that's so you cool. can come by talk to him uh, pick his brain about what you whatever you want to you can talk to me about whatever i'm the Dave Bass Rush won his or, derby yesterday. Or he fished else. solo. Oh, he did? Did he really? Fish solo had 15 pounds and big bass. $50 entry fee, one 800 Nice. Good for him, Said man. he started in a community hole, looked around and went, I ain't winning fishing around all these people. This place is beat up. So he made yeah. a hero run. Where was this at? Cooper River. Oh. So he made a hero run and it paid off. <laughs> he won 800 bucks. Yeah. Very uh, nice. And I also believe I think the kids these days call them a, a meetup. A get together is kind of old school. So it's a it's a meetup and a get together. A meetup. That's what they call them. <laughs> well, 
You guys can meet up with Panger, and then all us old folks can stand around with our canes and walkers and, and hang have around. a get together. And have a get together. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Matthew. Boy, all this right. is just a fantastic get together. Yeah. So uh, Saturday, uh, we'd love to see you. Come on out, talk to us, hang out a little bit, get some good stuff in the AFCO booth, and. Uh, Talk a little fishing and anything else that you want to talk about. All right, what else, Matthew? No rodeo this weekend? No nothing? Oh, yeah, we had... Uh, yeah. Success? My Valentine's Day night consisted of driving to Texas to pick up a horse, then driving back to McAllister, stayed in the trailer, then she ran twice on Saturday, and then we came home, and then I went back fishing. She so won any money? No, no. Man. What's up with the horse, man? You need to have a heart-to-heart. Oh, it's it, all good. I mean, with a horse, it's all good. Because isn't she was it like the horse it tuned on? No, it's like a combination of everything, huh? And she was like, her she ran one horse that like wasn't expected <laughs> to do well. It's like a horse wait, in training. Wait a minute! So you're paying money and you're expected not yeah, to well, do well. Well, you got to get them. It's like you don't just go into a tournament and expect to win. You got to get seasoned. You got to take your butt kickings. You got to learn stuff. So you got to get these horses in there, just like you do in a bass tournament, okay. where you're like, I mean, you don't have never fished a tournament and then yeah. go balls to the wall into a coaster and expect to compete. Yeah, I mean, some guys do, but all right, I. I oh. Whatever. All right, last thing, and then we're going to take a break and come back with Chris Zaldane. I want your thoughts real quick on this. Is it good to have this long break going into the Bassmaster Classic? Do you think it's better rather than having the back-to-back events? In other words, do you think it's going to benefit some of these guys? And I'm going to ask Zaldane this too, but I just want to know what your thoughts are. Gives them a little bit more time. Or for those guys that had a bad tournament like Chris Zaldane, is it a good thing? that they're not fishing or is it a bad thing not to get dialed in i have no idea i was thinking of it more from the i guess competition side between the organizations now because you were going to have you know two elite series rolling in where that was on the forefront now you're competing two and a half days out of the first eight days and during that time you've had you'll have had two uh bpt events and an flw tour event and a, a costa event kind of in the mix there too so i mean for th- at the moment the bass is kind of at the back burner but i think it also gives people a chance to kind of lead up to it from a, a competition side i mean dude it's the bass master classic i don't think it, whether you've been fishing good or bad i think you're gonna have a lot of guys that are really 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 ready for it now yeah. but i mean it's like one of those deals who's the coach that said man if i have to give him a pep talk before this game we don't have a chance anyway yeah no it's a good point we'll ask chris Here just in a minute. Uh, Good week this week, everybody. We're going to take a break. Come back with Chris Zaldane just in a few minutes. Everybody stay tuned. The ultimate fishing system starts with Lorentz HDS Live. Upgrade to HDS Live with a Ghost Trolling Motor, Live Sight Transducer, or Structure Scan 3D and get up to $500 cash back. Yeah, you care about gear ratios, inches per turn, and ball bearings, but most importantly, you want reliability and dependability in the equipment you use. Lou's doesn't cut corners when it comes to the gear they build. The new Speed Spool LFS is the best $99 reel in the market. Go see for yourself. We've paired one of the most iconic hulls in the history of bass boats with a proven lineup of trusted accessories. We're bringing you best-in-class value and performance, leaving others in your wake. Turnkey value, turnkey performance. The Pantera 2 is an overachiever in the 19-foot category. Once you hit the throttle, you'll feel the rush, and there's no looking back. Kevin, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just filling in for Billy. I need a 660 Shad crankbaits in uh, the Series 5 model. We're out. You're not out. You got all kinds of them right there. We're out. Kevin, I need six. Have a lollipop. I do not want a lollipop. Have a lollipop.
Do you have it the sexy shad color? At Duckett Fishing, we have assembled the top pros in the country to help us design rods to give you a competitive advantage. Castability, strength, durability, action, sensitivity, weight and balance, and consistency. Combine that with the best warranty in the industry and you have rods that are pro-driven. Duckett Fishing, pro-driven. I want to share to you a new product we got coming out from Sunline. This is the FC leader size spools that we have now. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests for this. A lot of you guys use fluorocarbon for leaders only, myself included. And one of the problems you have is when you have a 200 yard spool, that might last you two, three, four years. You might even lose it before you even get done with the spool. So we've gone to a little smaller spool. These are 50 yard spool sizes. You know, that way you're not holding your line on forever. You can keep your line fresh, use it when you can. Stores real easily in the boat. We got all of our popular line sizes that you're used to with our sniper from five to 14 pound. If you guys are looking for a line that you're only tying for a leader, Go check out Sunline FC Leader 100% fluorocarbon and give it a try. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Engineered and built to be rugged with waterproof and submersible options. Designed for easy installation, Blue Water is available in a variety of colors and styles. All backed by a limited lifetime warranty. Blue Water by TH Marine. The name Spro says it all. Spro stands for Sports Professionals. When you look at the, the pro staff that Spro has brought on board over the past 15 years, it's been pretty incredible. I mean, one got it just then. From the development of the Rock Crawler to the McStick, from the Fat Pop of the Little John series, when you tie, a Spro bait on. You know it's been designed by a professional to get the job done. While I travel the country on the Bassmaster Elite Series, I simply can't let the weather be the reason I don't win $100,000. That's why I use AFCO clothing to keep me warm, dry, and protected from whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me. My season depends on it. My career depends on it. Afco, any fish, any water. All of us on the Pro Tournament Trail use Gamagatsu hooks. Why? Because they are absolutely the best. It's not about how many bites you get. It's how many you put in the boat. Gamagatsu makes hooks for every fishing style. We didn't come this far to lose fish. Did you? For more information, visit gamakatsu.com. The Big Bite Baits Kamikaze Swim On is a very unique bait. and It's got a full body, but with ribs to give it a bigger profile, but not more plastic. It's got a jointed tail that gives it a lot of action, as well as this up and down crawl type trail with holes and ribs in it, so it creates a bubble trail almost. This bait is supposed to be fished upside down or vertical like this on a great for a chatter bait. I prefer it on a swim jig as well but you can also cut it down and put it on the back of a finesse jig. You know flip it around for some spotted bass or flipping docks. Anytime you want a small compact you know little trailer for it this is great for it. So check out the full lineup of swim ons at bigbitebaits.com. All right, we are back on a Monday, kicking off the week, and we are ready to go to our special guest live via Skype from Fort Worth. Is that right, Matthew? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually headed to Fort Worth in three weeks for <laughs> senior bowling. Yeah. <laughs> what is that website you have pulled up over there? Uh,. On the other computer over there, yeah. there's something with all these bar graphs on it, and yeah. it's literally a website that <laughs> analyzes oil patterns. Is it well, kind of no, like it's the actual 
pattern. Nope. It would be like if is it if you go to a tournament, if you go to a tournament and you hand it out maps and and maps that contain the information where the fish are. Okay, here's where you got to go catch. So it's them. like the hot spots map for yeah. bowling. Yeah, it's like this. This is this is what the layout is. Okay. So there's. Have easy you ever done that? Like, got, have, you know, that? they have the hot spot maps. Yeah. And then there's like a little fish icon, and then you look up there, and it tells you what it is and what time of year and where to catch them. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Have you yeah. ever actually like gone to a new lake, bought a hot spots map, and then just like gone and fished the no. the, the hot spots have you? on the map? No. 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 It just was curious. Now, Twenty five, thirty years ago, maybe based upon the map, but not the electronic version of it. You know, where you used to buy the the maps at Bass Pro and Academy and all that and everything. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, the I've paper done that. map. It's a yeah, paper when, map. Dude, it's got a little fish yes. and then you like coordinate when it. When nothing and... else worked, hell yeah, I used it. <laughs> wonder if Chris has ever done that. I don't know. He's probably, he's too young to even, he probably no, doesn't, he doesn't even know what paper like maps maps are. And stuff. I bet he doesn't even have any paper maps. Let's bring him in. Chris. Morning, guys. Hey, what's up? Do you have paper maps? No. See, no, man. I was right. Have you ever had paper maps? I have. Earlier in my career through the 2000s, all of my maps, they are on something as big as that right there. It's a little Lake Master chip. chip. Yeah. yeah. Now, can you buy the, can you buy like the hotspots deal that'll like show you? Because you know, we're, you know what we're talking about. Like, do you look oh, at yeah. a map and it's like, yeah, hey, fish little, here. Have you ever done yeah. that in a tournament where you're just like... You, you know, you know, I have, but the thing is, if I can see it, then you can see it. The rest of the guys, the locals can see it, and a lot of times that doesn't pan out. It's just a, it's a, it's a hot spot, and it's a pressured <laughs> spot. So, <laughs> I'm just curious. I yeah, I've done that many, many years. Has ago. it ever worked? Yeah, Texoma. I can remember one. Yeah, right there. There's a little point right there in little glasses, not big glasses, but little glasses. And it's on the hot spot map. And it's on the hot spot map. And you know what? Uh, some of the old time pros will tell you. What's that? You know why it's called a community hole? It's because the community catches fish out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what it was. That is very I mean, true. it was that's me and five other yeah. boats. I remember that. <laughs> why would I not fish it if the community could catch them? Sure as hell, I could catch them. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. right, Chris, man. Thank you so much for taking time out. I know uh, a lot of stuff going on building up to the Bassmaster Classic, but I thought it'd be cool. We haven't had you on in 2020, yeah. and, uh, you know, Matt, he, he drills me all the time. He's like, man, you're just negative Nancy. You want to talk about the <laughs> negative? But I always look at it as you're going to learn from mistakes or situations or things that occurred when success was not there. Now, I'm not, I'm not calling you out. But I think everybody knows how Paul Mueller caught him on the SJR, how yep. he won. All the information yep. is out there. But not too many people know what went wrong. Hence, yep. I thought it would be a great idea to have you on because let's uh, – a fact's a facts, man. You did not have that great of a tournament at, at the SJR. No, 80th out of uh, 88. A brutal, brutal tournament. Um, and it's like – you know, you talked about Kyle Welcher and, and, and poker, and I love playing poker myself, but I think the motto or the, uh, you know, the motto for the week was if you think long, you think wrong. And, you know, that just like at the poker table, you get called or whatever it is, and, and you know, after a long thinking, a lot of times you'll think wrong. So with 48 hours of, uh, of thinking of my next move, and, you know, I had a live camera in my boat the first day, um we already knew it was a short tournament 40 mile an hour wins um you know i thought long and hard about where that first move was where you know where i was going to go and i ended up making a very very long run down south um which is up river away from the ocean and when i got there there was like eight seven eight inches less water there um so all the lily pads that were you know that were just nice and laid over you know the water level was right up against the pads and when i got there there was about six or seven inches of stock showing so that's never a good thing it's extremely low tide and i had already committed down to that area now if we would have just went on uh, on that thursday um you know i i had in the back of my mind let's just let's just I call it like dummy fishing, <laughs> but let's just go down the middle of these canals and just, and just fish slow. I think a lot of times myself, and I think a lot of California guys as well, being tactical fishermen, being technical fishermen, we, we overcomplicate Florida fishing and Florida fishing is, 
as simple as just going down the bank with a Texas rig or with a swim jig or a chatterbait or something like that, just going down the bank and not looking at contours and, oh, where do the fish move from here? Um, Florida gets me every single time, every single time. Have you thought about the starts to your year? Because I look look back over your first, uh, your oh, last terrible. four starts to your season. And you had a, a hundred and seventh in one, yep. a sixty fourth, yep. a thirty sixth, and now an eightieth. Is that something to where you fish better on momentum? Is it something to where you've just got so much on your plate going into the year, or you just don't like that time of the year? It's I love the time of year. I love fishing this time of year. Whenever I could find an early jerk bait bite or an early swim bait bite or an early flipping bite, I mean, I, I really thrive. But um, I think that second thing you said, there's a lot on my plate uh, coming after uh, coming off a successful year and, and, you know, uh, and, and a little bit of momentum too. in that last, that last part of the season, um, I said it on stage with Mercer is I can't, you cool off. I mean, period, you get rid of that boat. You became so, uh, you know, intimate with, and, and you know, sell the boat, get rid of it, turn the boats, new wrap, new jerseys, new hats, new, this new logos, new, that new sponsorships and new partners. And it's just, uh, you completely disconnect and like you should from the year before. Um, but yeah, I definitely cool off, uh, in the off season. Um, and it, 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 it reminds me every single year that you cannot come in flat footed. You got to come in on your toes and you got to come in hot and heavy right off the giddy. Um, but every year I get woken up like, Hey man, like get on it, get on it now. So last year, I think I had a 36th place finish at the St. John's river. And then I backed it right up with the second place. Cause I fished pissed off. I, I really did. So, um, and I planned on doing that going into Chickamauga, uh, which we should be there now, but, uh, of course the flooding, they, they postponed it. So now I get to fish pissed off going into the classic and that's not good for those other guys. <laughs> really? I mean, I am, I dude, 80th place. I mean, that is absolutely brutal. So, um, but there was a couple different things to think about there and, and, you know, halfway through that tournament, the first day I only had one little fish and, um, I was thinking, man, I just blew AOI in, in one single day, just blew it. Absolutely blew AOI. Um, but with the way the, the AOI, you know, payout structure is and things like that, it's, you know, if you're not first, you're, you're literally last. Uh, so whether you finish second in AOI or 39th in AOI, you know, you make the classic, um, so I think this year I could gamble a little more. I, I really, really can, um, you know, keep the swim bait in my hand, keep the bigger baits in my hand. Um, but that's the goal for this year is to crack open that bottle of champagne that Mark, that Mark Jeffries gave me, uh, you know, last summer. And that is the absolute goal. We came so, uh, we came so close so many times last year, three second places. And, uh, this year I want to crack that bottle of champagne open on that stage and spray it all over Dave Mercer. And, um, <laughs> but, but, and by the way, Mark, <laughs> Trey, Trey tells me it's a little bit of bad luck, I guess, but I'm, I'm toting around that big bottle of champagne. It's not bad luck in, in Nebo's. Okay. So Nebo's are a little 17 pound, uh, uh, rat terrier that we got from Lake Dardanelle. Yeah. Whenever we travel with him in the airplane, we've got to carry him in a little carry on size dog carrier. So we haven't traveled with them in a while. So I've got that big bottle of champagne in that dog carrier, and it's chilling in the back of my truck right now. So. That's not bad luck, man. That, I, I'm so telling you, that's not bad it's, luck. It's on ice, so to speak. So that is the goal this year to crack that thing open on the stage, and hopefully we get it done uh, at Gunnersville. And again, redemption, f- fishing pissed off. Hopefully it's at Gunnersville in two weeks. Very nice. All right, I want to go back to the SJR. Yep. Uh, I'm yep. curious during the two days that you had off. What did you do? Yeah. Well, that's funny you said that. Uh, you know, it, it was welcomed by by my uh, our household. Trait and I had a lot of just work to catch up with. A lot of things were late this year, contracts and 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 you know, partnerships and stuff like that and boat rigging and and catching up with social media and videos and stuff like that. So those two days off in that 30, 40 mile an hour wind, you know, we just hid behind the house there. We caught up with, with some social media videos. Um, and then just kind of, you know, that second half of the day, just took a breath, relaxed. I mean, I, I got my boat wrapped maybe four days before we left for, for Florida. I mean, just, it's just, people don't realize just how hectic it is going into a season 
you know, you got to have everything packed from, you know, you know, all your tackle and, and, you know, you're, you got to have your jerseys lined up, your hats lined up. I mean, there was a guy that showed up uh, without a boat wrap, um, you know, and, and it's just, I, I get it. It's just, everything just piles up so quick when you start the first week of February, um, that off season just isn't off enough it's not long enough so those two days i spent time just kind of catching up with things catching up with emails and stuff like that and heck i could have used two more days to tell you the truth are you jumping into the filming stuff too like all those guys too it seems like so there's... yeah so i'm trying yeah i've got a guy um i'm doing something a little bit different um you know it seems like you know the the, the current trend is the the slow-mo hero shots and and you know the, the the spray coming off the reels and and that's all cool and very very entertaining um i'm taking a different uh different approach this year i've, I've got a camera guy with me all throughout practice he's riding around with me in practice um yeah, it, of course it's okayed by the bass officials and trip um but just mainly breaking down bodies of water um as i'm there you know it's just a great opportunity to talk voice you know how i break things down it's almost like a practice bass live um, so that's kind of what we're going, uh, going forward with. Unfortunately, the SJR was super stingy all through practice as well. So you could only talk about the conditions, you know, uh, during practice, uh, you know, so many times and, and, um, it, Florida's its own beast down there and, and to shoot, uh, just shoot media down in Florida. It's hard to hide the fact that, you know, you're, you're, you're in Florida, you see the pads, you see the dark water and stuff like that. But to answer your question, yeah, we're trying to get real general with delivering fishing tips and techniques. All right. I want to go back once again to your days off. I'm kind of stuck on this because <laughs> no I, I, I want to know, could you have, and I know certain areas of the SJR, you just can't get to them by land, but was there anything wrong, especially with such a dramatic effect that the weather had on certain areas could you was it legal to do to drive to the area that you were thinking about in your fishing vehicle. in your vehicle and just kind of walking out going oh man this thing is going to be blown out did you think about that was that possible could you do that what's the facts as far as I'm concerned, that is legal, and I did. I thought about it, but unfortunately, the area I was going to was so remote. Um, you know, you would need a truck drive, an airboat drive, and then ride an alligator <laughs> out to my, my patch of, of of lily pads out there. And and the only thing I came equipped with after those those 40 mile an hour winds for two days, and then a nasty post front, bright blue skies, 30 you know 30 degrees overnight. Only thing I was equipped with was was basically the you know my experience in Florida, and whenever you have that situation in Florida, you know you're always looking for something you know over their head. And I I decided to fish mats, but you know when the when you know way down south down there past Dexter, um, unfortunately when the water disappears, so do the fish. I mean there was only that much water underneath those mats, and by then I was already committed. So I did think about that though, Mark, that's, that's, uh, that, 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 uh, that would have, would have become helpful. I think a lot of those guys in Lake George, um, they knew that, uh, you know, those nasty, nasty West and, and South winds completely smoked that those sides of, of Lake George. But, um, Lake George was a place where that had roads that you could go check out and, and, and see some of those waves. I know the bass media guys, they went out and filmed some of those waves and they said it was pretty gnarly out there. Yeah. Interesting there. You mentioned, uh, seeing it in 2010 when, uh, Jason Williamson won, I believe it was on Clark's Hill over, uh, the Cajun baby by just an ounce or two crochet. It had yeah. a horrible practice was driving yeah. back to, uh, uh, lament his sorrows and drove over a bridge that was on Clark's Hill, looked to his left and went, damn, that looks like home. So he <laughs> got you. back, he yeah. op pulled up that the map, like the figured out how to get there, drove there and caught all those fish on a frog simply because he drove over this, this, yeah. this slough yep. or Creek and went, I haven't fished here yet. And then he started the tournament yep. there and almost won the dang thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess you got to use every tool, you know, in the in in the shed to your advantage. You know, I saw, uh, I, I I tuned in briefly to that that tournament on the Ufala when uh, on our way home there, and I saw one of the guys, you know, the period ended or whatever, and I saw one of the guys just kind of looking and looking for bedfish. Although you're off the clock, you're kind of on the clock looking for your next cast, you know. So, you know, if if it's legal, you know, and use that tool, no doubt. 
Chris, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, it, it, this is the way that it's been for years and years and years and years. Uh, shorten event. No matter what the conditions are, if they cancel a day or two days, should the event still be four days? Um, you know, the argument goes both ways. Um, if they have the resources, you know, the personnel to go through Tuesday, I, I would love to see four day events. That's what, you know, that's, that's, you know, what the elite series was kind of founded on. And, and, uh, and it it shows you who's the champion for you know four days. You have to be consistent. You got to adapt to every condition uh, thrown at you. Um, so yeah, I like four day tournaments. I, I mean, I'll tell you what, these three day tournaments. I don't. I can't tell you how many tournaments I would have won um, if we had three day tournaments. You yeah. know, and 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 I've gone into that fourth day leading several times now. So yeah, I mean. Uh, I'm for four-day tournaments because it takes a luck factor out there even further. All right. Now, having said that, and I'm glad you answered that, should the Bassmaster Classic be four days? Ooh. Ooh. I could go either way on that. <laughs> but you have to practice. So that's the thing. That yeah. one extra day, you have to practice that way, too. I mean, practice, your whole mindset's completely different. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, me going into, you know – throwing a swim bait for example big giant eight to nine ten inch swim bait uh, dude to get 15 bites on it versus 20 bites 20 bites versus 15 bites i'd much rather pick those those three days 15 bites you know um so and it's history i mean you got history, history. there it's with history. the 50 three years yeah. and also i mean it is the Bassmaster classic it is a standalone so every time you add more fish into the equation you take away the magnitude and impact of each sure. individual fish so obviously 15 fish is going to hold more magnitude than 20 fish so each fish then becomes more important which it should in the yeah. biggest tournament yeah. that's my yeah. take on it no doubt no I, doubt no i'm with you man i get it all right i want to get into the classic here in a minute now but i want to talk about strategy for the remainder of the season with that okay. bad start you know this whole the way that the angler of the year works now it's just uh the winner gets 100 grand and nobody else gets anything sure uh what are your thoughts now? Is it all about your strategy going toward trying to to absolutely win every single event? Do you try and, and fish conservative just so that you make sure that you make the classic next year? Uh, what are your thoughts on the remainder of the season? You know, I'm. This is my ninth season fishing the Elite Series, and and uh, I think we take roughly thirty seven to forty guys in the classic every year. So, uh, no doubt. I mean, whether you finish second or 38th, 39th, as long as you make the classic, hey, you know, that's, that, that's great. Um, I think, personally for myself, to go out and try to win every single event um, again and turn those seconds into first place, I know how it's not easy, but I know I recognize when it's happening throughout the week um, to start taking those risks. Hey, on, this is day four. We're kind of leading it. We're in position to win. Um, let, let's, let's, let's go for it. So, yeah, this year, um, you know, like I said, I feel like I took myself out of AOI already, but I, there's only one way to, to get after it, you know, get, get back at it. And that's, that's by, 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 by winning tournaments, um, and getting those blue trophies. So that's my mindset going for the rest of the year after what happened at SJR, um, just, just to, to win tournaments. I don't care where I end up in points as long as I make the classic. So let's call it 40th or above. And if, if, I feel like personally, if I take that mindset, try to win every single tournament, I've been around long enough to know that I'll come close um, and qualify for the classic. So um, definitely, definitely trying to trying to win those this year. Is there a different vibe? And, and what do you think the, the essence of the whole elimination of the Angler of the Year event and the elimination of additional money that would be available? Yeah. Is there a different vibe out there among the competitors to where the attitude has changed on how they approach tournaments? It is. And matter of fact, like I said, I was so busy in the off season. I'm, those emails came through and, and, you know, Hey, this is going to be the payout for 2020. This is going to be, you know, AOI situation for 2020. Um, I just kind of skimmed over them. It really didn't hit me until I got to the service yard on like day two of practice. And one of the veterans was there 
um, kind of grew up in my class and, and, uh, and he was there getting some stuff worked on. And he, you know, he told me, Hey, look, you know, there's, there's, they're only paying hundred thousand for first place AOI this year and there's nothing else. And right then it kind of hit me and I was, I was thinking, Oh wow. So the goal now is just try to win two or three of these. And, uh, you know, that guy was Seth fighter and it's the same, same mentality. I mean, he's the same kind of fisherman. He, he fishes to win every single tournament and he's always looking for five big bites as am I never trying to, you know, catch limits and limits of fish. He's just looking for big ones to end up on top of every week. Wait, wait, you're telling me that Seth Fighter read an email that you didn't read and yeah. had to inform you of a logistical yeah, yeah. <laughs> something yeah. logistical yeah. Yeah. that was the good, first that was point. the first sign that things were not going to go well at the St. John's River it was just a weird man it's a weird start to the season man yeah. very just so bizarre 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 start to the season and Bass is doing the best they can given the conditions and uh, you know sponsorships and mother nature and and they're doing a great job it's just and they're having to think on the fly you know they're having to change things up and reschedule and and uh you know we're all professionals here so we just kind of um you know uh, go with it and and uh try to perform our very best every week uh, now i don't remember and maybe you can help me out chris but i know the 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 texas event that's going to take place at Lake Fork. I think first place in that's going to be one hundred twenty-five thousand. So yes. there's actually yep. twenty-five thousand more in the prize fund when you take that. And yep. And and uh, the opportunity that lies with with that event, and then obviously the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, you guys are still fishing for quite a bit of money, but it, sure. that will at the end of the year. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like when you change jobs and mm -hmm. the job that you were at had a bonus plan that you got for your Christmas bonus, but now Q4, yep, yep. you know, the new company that you have, Oh no, we don't have a bonus plan. So yep. it, it's that an sounds, unfortunate situation. Sounds familiar. It, yeah, it is. It, <laughs> but it is it what is, it is, but you guys still is, have yeah, opportunities that, to, to, exactly to make a lot of money. It. Sure. No. Yeah. No doubt. There's still a ton of money there. Just got re, uh, redistributed differently. Um, you know, they're paying ten thousand down to fortieth now. So every top forty finish, yeah, that's ten grand right there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. You know, it's it is like changing. It's almost like changing jobs where they have a different, you know, different, uh, you know, Q4 plan. And you know, I finished fourth last year in AOI. I've had a sixth, a seventh, an eighth in AOI, and those are nice little checks to carry you through the off season. No doubt out i mean last year i mean that was like 40k just boom right there and that's just a nice little bonus to carry you through so um so unless i finish aoy this year um there's no bonus check at the end of the year all right man thoughts on the classic uh thoughts on the classic uh it's real simple for me um what i experienced last year in knoxville um man i i felt the flow uh, for once in my career, uh, you know, my classic, you know, career, I, I felt the flow of what it takes to, to get six bites, land five of them, um, and do very well. I think I was in second place going to the final day of the classic last year. I'd love to see myself in that place. Um, you know, in a couple of weeks, I finished second place at Gunnersville in, in May of last year. And, and, uh, there's a lot of big ones there. I, I really, um, uh, I really started to feel, um, the way the fish move on Lake Gunnersville. Um, the Tennessee river system has been, you know, I, I grew up in California. I, I didn't know, but it, it's taken me seven, eight years to realize how those fish move along the Tennessee river system. And, um, I've accumulated a lot of good areas and a lot of good spots on Lake Gunnersville, um, over the years. So it's simple, B bigger baits, uh, six bites, looking for six bites, looking to land five of them. The 50th Bassmaster Classic. The the competition is 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 fierce, no doubt. Um, the expo is going to be ridiculous. I mean, I made a social media post. You know, is is I, I asked two questions, and are we going to see a dirty thirty, a thirty sack, and is the fire department going to shut down the expo because it's just too <laughs> crowded? And they've done it before. I think in Oklahoma they've done it before. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's going to be some of the sports' biggest names cruising around the expo floor. 
you know, working for their sponsors. I'm going to be out there hucking a big old piece of rubber looking for five and six <laughs> pounders. <laughs> That's funny. But, uh, and then as far as, you know, the competition goes, you know, there's some absolute hammer sticks I'm fishing against. A lot of guys will be flying under the radar. So I don't know those, those pre, a lot of guys are fishing the classic for the first time. So those jitters for the classic, uh, you know, hopefully it affects some of those guys, like the like the Johnson brothers, for example. Those those uh, those Canadian guys, dude, they could catch them. And it, I, it seems like every March and April, I always see those guys in, in the same areas that I'm fishing. I'm I'm always bouncing around Corey or bouncing around Chris, and uh, it's 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 uh, it's pretty amazing. So that's why I'm gonna go into the classic. If those guys show up, I'm gonna go into the classic with my lid on. How about no, that, look Matthew? at it, Matt. How about that? <laughs> nice. Strap tight, too. Look at that. Nice. Strap tight. What kind of uh, shield are you wor- rolling there? Oh, that's just a that's just a regular half shield there. Very nice. Yeah. Been playing lately, man. I know that was getting, what I was gonna getting say. Getting you've been, yeah. you've been yeah. lacing them up a little bit in the offseason. Oh, yeah. Dallas has yeah. a crazy big hockey scene, you know. Ever since the Stars they moved yeah. there from Minnesota, I mean, there's a got, several like, NHL eight guys. Facilities. Oh, dude, there's like eight facilities in the yeah. in the Metroplex to choose from. So I'm 30 minutes away from a sheet of ice, and uh, I'll go out and skate it out and sweat it out and, uh, you know, try to stay uh, stay in shape. That's yeah. awesome. I haven't touched the ice in like three years. That long? Yeah, it's <laughs> been three years. Not even couples skate? Oh, no, I went to uh, last Christmas. <laughs> I did I did go to the outdoor rink in Oklahoma City. Last year. You're right. Did you hold hands? Absolutely. Jeffrey Kinder can't it. stand he up on the, on the skate. So it. it was like the one time. You know what she said? She's like, after I know your personality, I find it hard to believe that you would be competitive in hockey. What? Yeah. She, huh. didn't, she didn't think I, I was I tough think, I enough. I think the opposite. She didn't think I was tough enough. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Speak, speaking speaking awesome. of which, I got I got the question that you talked about the feel, the vibe, the the jitters and stuff. Go back to this stretch here from Gunnersville that you mentioned that second place finish, ninth at the St. Lawrence, third at Cayuga, second at Ten Killer. Um, Banging them out. You know, well well documented that you were in the hunt and a lot of those things. You had guys that did crazy stuff to end up beating you in some of them. Yeah. But what is that feeling like? I mean, there aren't that many guys in this sport. I'm thinking Denny Brower, Skeet Reese, Kevin Van Dam, who have rattled off that many. Either I mean a lot of them had wins in it, but that many wins or that many top threes, fours, and fives in a row. So just now that you have a little bit of hind, uh, a little bit of perspective on it, kind of walk us through that kind of stretch. Did you know you were going to catch him? Was it like holy cow, it's happening again, or were you just like, did you reach a zone? Did you reach the Rick Clun zone? Dude, it is a total zone that you just cannot explain. It, uh, you know, to put it in a few words. Um, that whole stretch man I, I just felt like whatever rods i had rigged up on my deck i mean it's not like oh okay we're going to like 10 kilo let me redo all my rods or we're going to the cayuga let me redo all my whole my whole setup it's like whatever rods were on the deck or whatever was rigged up i felt like i could catch a fish on a, you know any given rod at any given time just by saying oh that bank looks good or that bank looks good so it's absolutely a, a zone you get in um and it's just you can't you just can't screw it up it's the weirdest thing um and it's very very hard to explain but once once you're in it it's uh, it's uh, oh second place oh another second place oh a third place oh a ninth place you know it's 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 really crazy and you kind of feed off your competitors too you kind of feel the vibe of what how they're doing and 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 how they're catching them and of course you know you see oh there's a tournament leader so you know he's you know he's doing this or he's doing that and and you kind of play off every given thing um, but it, it, dude, I can't explain it. I, I really can't. I know that's a boring answer. No, it, but it's, um, good. it's I, you. You just can't explain it. So um, let, let me ask this then, and this is, answer this honestly. Not it's not cocky if you answer yes to this. Does it feel easy when it's happening? When you're in absolutely, that zone? yeah. I said it earlier. I said it when it's happening. It is so easy. I mean, super easy. And you start to see too when those guys get on those runs like that. I mean, you could use the word luck, but it's not. It's not luck. It's like you, it's intuition. Something's telling you to be on that offshore spot at that given time or fishing that co- current break on the St. Lawrence River because it feels good. But you know, but when you make those little decisions like that and and you're rewarded with a big five or six pound smallmouth, it's it's in your mind. It's easy. Like, oh man, I mean, anyone could do this. 
but um, you you basically put yourself in position to make it easy on yourself. It's it's those those uh, those kind. Of, it's that intuition that puts you on that spot, or uh, intuition that that helps you pick up that rod. And just on one cast, you catch a, a big giant one. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it seems very very easy when it's happening. And then, sorry, do you have some more? No, I have two two okay. left. But then, does it? Do you know when you're getting in it, and then do you know when you're getting out of it, or is it just organic to where you look back and you're like, "Damn, I was in it." Dude, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's like an Uber ride or a roller coaster ride where you strap in and it, it's <laughs> taking you wherever you know wherever it goes. Really, um, uh, once you're in it, you just you go go along for the ride, try to milk it as long as possible, um, and then you know it takes something like the season ending. Uh, for you to get off that ride or something like that. Um, so uh, you, you got to do everything you can to kind of feed that momentum, to feed that momentum and try to make all the right decisions, both decisions, both on the water and off the water to feed that momentum and keep that roller coaster going and keep it riding uh, and keep it going uh, downhill fast, you know. Last question, then I'll, I'll turn it over to Jeffrey. So a bunch of guys who fish clubs here, BFLs, clubs, Bass yeah. Nation, whatever you want to fish. They're starting their season out. Uh, you know, we've all had those days, right, Mark, where you're sitting there and you're like, damn, I, I am good. I am making the, right, the right decisions. <laughs> it's going. And, and I know there's not an exact answer to this. What's one or two key things that, that, that as the season's getting going, guys can set themselves up for? to give themselves the opportunity to get in that zone, whether it's in the Wednesday night jackpots or the Bassmaster opens? Yeah, no, that's a good question, Matt. And uh, two things. One, equipment. Um, just making sure those are controllables. Control the controllables, your equipment, your boat, boat fuel, just little things like that. Um, but just, you know, uh, preparation to give yourself the chance to get you know, to get lucky or to get on that roll. And then two, uh, it's, it's decisions just in your mind. And the decisions I make now are just based on, um, you know, nine years of experience on the tour. So, you know, in the back of my head, I can't explain them or I can't list them off, but in the back of my head, I've got, uh, you know, a, a catalog of situations and a catalog of bodies of water that I could pull back on and, and, and try to make those decisions um, to set myself up to get lucky or set myself up to get on one of those rolls. So, um, so one, control the controllables, and then two, try to make every decision possible to help you um, put yourself in position. I mean, that's all it is. And a lot of that boils down to uh, experience and intuition. Very nice. All right, I have two questions for you, Chris, and then we'll let you go. One, being a West Coast guy, and, and I have asked several West Coast anglers this question, but I, I really, really want to know deep inside your soul whether or not that Bass could pull this off. Do you think someday – that they could actually kick off the season with the Bassmaster Classic in the city of Sacramento uh, on the Delta. Would the city support it? Would there be enough people out there to support it? And would you like seeing the Classic kick off in California? Oh, dude, the first week of March. Uh, I'm going to say yes to all of those questions. Um, the last time we were on the California Delta, I think it was 16. Um, I don't know if you guys went to that one, but the crowd yep. was amazing. Sacramento, Sacramento is the, the capital of California. Tons and tons and tons of outdoors men and women all over Sacramento. You got the waterfowl guys, you got the, the deer hunters up there up north. Um, and of course, spotted bass fishermen, largemouth fishermen, they fish clear like Delta, Shasta, tons and tons of outdoorsmen up there. Uh, the Sacramento uh, International Sportsman's Exposition, the ISE show out there thousands of people show up for that thing they're all wearing carhartt and 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 camo and and you know fishing gear so a lot of people up there a lot of crowds um that would be a very very cool venue no doubt and it was rumored that they were gonna have it there i mean it was rumored and i don't know where the rumor started or or you know where they came from but it was rumored that they were talking about having the classic out in sacramento so i, I hope that those ties or that rumor still has a little bit of spark left because I'd love to see it in the first week of March. You'll see giant weights. Um, 
and watch those guys run down the Sacramento River from Sacramento down south all the way to the California Delta, just fishing, you know, 40 miles from the Golden Gate Bridge, man. That would be so awesome. I, I think because I've said this a zillion times, the, the first event when it was in Stockton and the crowd that was in that park at Stockton Unreal. was like anything I'd ever seen before. So I, I, I think it would be outstanding. I think the city would support it. You and I both yep. know that there are so many other elements that are involved in doing Working. that from a financial standpoint, from a financial uh, commitment standpoint from the city and from the organization. So whether yeah. it happens or not, who knows, but I, I think it would be enormously cool for the sport and for the area and for the state of California to be able to have that event in California. Yeah, no doubt. You know, California is known for being a, you know, the, the lefty state and, and, uh, you know, a lot of people think, Oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, hipsters and SoCal and, and people that don't fish up in San Francisco. But let me tell you, there are a ton of outdoors men and women out, out in California and they would absolutely support the Bassmaster classic. All right, man. Last thing I am coming out and I think this is going to be the what do we say? 12th, 13th year of the Bassmaster Classic odds yep. that I've done. Something like that. All right. They are, if Vegas was going to set a line and you could walk up to the sportsbook window and place a bet on anglers at certain odds, that's how I set my odds each year. Sure. So, Hookie the sure. Bookie right now has Chris Zaldane at 6-1. to one. Would Ooh. you take $1,000, walk up to the sports bet? window and place a thousand dollars on yourself at six to one i take 10 grand to, to the window <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've, I've opened up a book <laughs> nice or yeah. the 20 or the or the i'll take the 2500 i got from the sjr for finishing 80th and yeah. put it on myself at six to one. all right there you have it yeah. folks remember it's for entertainment purposes only that's that's why we do this, and I'm actually going to be coming out with the Classic Odds here, I think, in like a, next week. I think next awesome. week is when I do it. But right now I got you at, at 6-1, to one, and my odds fluctuate as we build up to the event. But sure. uh, it's been a cool thing, and, and I think, you know, you're right at 6-1. to one. Would you agree to that? Do you think that's a good no, line? No, that's fair. Oh, yeah, that's great. No, that's fair. That's about yeah. – I was going to say, yeah, 5-6-1. Yeah, five, that's that's – it seems fair All right, um based on history based on you know yeah. uh that seems about right there and i won't disappoint um i'm going there again i'm fishing pissed off when i fish mad i mean good things happen for me all right so. good stuff anything else matthew uh no <laughs> nothing else nothing else all right chris as always man uh, really appreciate you taking time out. Uh, you and Panger need to get together and play yeah, yeah, like men's play. pickup, man. No, yeah, no. come on, yeah, Matthew. No. I'll stand on Not the blue. A- I'll stand on the blue line and distribute the puck. <laughs> you know that guy, real, the guy who used maybe, to play. Yeah. You remember oh, when yeah. you were younger, there was always oh, that yeah. guy who'd be like, no, I'll play D. And I was like, didn't you yep. used to play like forward back when you played? He's like, no, nah, I'm in D. And then Don't, he'll take a couple yeah. strides, stop, and then just saucer pass across the Sand neutral zone to all the yeah, young kids your who can up. skate. That's right. That's right. All right. How about let, we'll go to a public skate then, you and I. <laughs> I'm not. Or we, <laughs> could, or we could bring, we could, we could double date. We'll bring yeah. trait. There we oh, go. Oh, jeez. Oh, you guys. Uh, just so, happiness, right. happiness on the ice for both couples. All right, Chris. Appreciate man. it, Mark. Oh, Thank we'll, you. We'll, hey, we'll see. Popping bottles at the classic. We're popping bottles. I like it. All right, man. I'll see you here (laughs) in a couple weeks in Birmingham. Take care. Look forward to seeing you soon, man. Thanks, guys. All right. There you have it. Chris Zaldane. And, uh, you know, he's pretty honest, man. Yeah. He stunk it up. Yep. And when you you have that decision that has to be made after the adverse conditions that that were dealt i mean he made a choice and he guessed wrong that's what i said i mean it's interesting he's talking about how he he had two days to think about it yeah. and think about it but just in my in my limited experience i have come to the realization that if i'm on the water or if i'm sitting there and i am struggling about what decision to make yeah. i am so screwed <laughs> because mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's just you realize like, oh, I had all these decisions to make. And you, you when you're fishing good, and this is yeah. what he talked about if you hit it, you're subconsciously making them. Whether it's from your Rolodex, whether it's just from picking up on little little pieces throughout the day. 
but it seems easy. The decisions seem easy. That's yeah. what he was talking about. Yeah. And when you're sitting there and you're struggling with it, you're struggling with it because you're not on them and you're not catching them. Now, I'm not saying you can't make a decision and catch them, but as a whole, the more I struggle, the, the more I think, the yeah. more I suck. <laughs> now, I've done a lot of sucking without thinking, but I'm just saying in general. One more thing, too, before we yeah. leave. There was also a derby that went down on. I remember Cliff Prince was debating. I don't think he fished it on whether or not to fish the uh, Toyota Series um, on the St. John's River. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Fitzgerald won that thing, 57-12. Uh, a legend cast a check. A, a, uh, a bass fishing icon cashed a check. Peter T. The very last check. No, we're we're talking. We're talking icon here. Fished it. Cashed the last check by Rolling. two ounces. Roland Martin. Really? Cashing a one thousand eight hundred seventy seven dollar check. Nice. Did Peter T. Fish that event? I don't know. I haven't scrolled know. through the entire oh, thing. Okay. It was tough on a lot of guys. But our guest tomorrow, Kyle Welcher, did fish the event. And he was in contention to win after the first day, 1914 wow. on the first day. So off to a heck of a start for the 2020 season for yeah. Mr. Welcher. I want to ask him if he remembers, like I've talked about 8 million times on the show now, that 2012 season, I believe it was, when he was 18 years old and led the tour event going into the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our guest tomorrow. Uh, I do want to ask you one thing real quick. Did you watch any of the NASCAR, the Daytona 500? You know, it got delayed, and then they started, and then it got delayed, no, and finally they not. canceled it. The one thing that I noticed, very, very interesting, there is not a title sponsor for the old, what was it, Nextel, Monster, Winston, Cup Series. Mm -hmm. No title sponsor. They just have a logo on there that says NASCAR. Hmm. All right? Which, the point I want to make is, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. The bad thing is they don't have a title sponsor. The good thing is, is they haven't went down to the level in reducing whatever the cost is to buy that and say, you know what? We're just going to give it up because we need the money. We'll give it to you. The BTL cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh. So uh, once again, great show. I want to thank Chris for talking about uh, – you know, the lack of success and really his struggles and the decisions that he made for his 80th place performance. Is he gonna be, he's going to be your favorite. For what? The classic. No, he's no? six to one. Well, I don't know what your odds are. Six to one could be the, the favorite odds. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just kind of piecing together things right now. But he, he even agreed six to one. That's good for him. With everything that's going on. Uh. With the BPT and MLF and fishing and all this stuff and all these states with gambling, do you think, yes or no, within five years, will you be able to, to legally place a bet on a bass tournament? I'll say this. If some things happen with Major League Fishing, yes. There are certain things that have well, to happen. I'm talking about the Bassmaster Classic. No. Not in five years, you don't think you could... Go in and put your money down no. on the Bassmaster Classic. No. It, you don't think it'd be a one-off? That's the only thing that they would handicap and you could bet on? No. I think it's dang near impossible to set odds for fishing. I think it's... I disagree. I think it is... There's too many variables. You talked about him controlling the... There's so many variables, Mark. I think you well, I'm not you disagreeing either, with that. You either... Win all the money, or you yeah. lose all the money if you're the one putting that on. Oh, I think the house definitely has the advantage. And why do Until, you think? Why do you think that sports betting exists already? Because most of the time, the house has the advantage. Until the right guy wins. It doesn't matter. Because in order to actually place a bet on it, you're never going to place a bet if it's like two to one, <laughs> three to one. Because there's you know fifty to eighty guys in it. It doesn't make sense unless you're, you know, 10 to 1, 15 to 1. I mean, anything Dude, less house, than 5, 6 to 1 doesn't make any money. sense. You're looking at, at KVD wins 13% of the time. Zaldane's been nine years they on tour and hasn't won. They do it in golf all the time. I know, but Tiger has, what, 18 majors? He has 90 wins. He's got a win percentage when in his prime of 20, 30%. But the house you're talking is still less making than, money. There's like two guys out who have a win percentage of higher than 10% in bass fishing. I think the house would rake it in. Yeah. I really do. But I think it would entice a lot of interest in the game. 
We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Good show. All right, tomorrow, Kyle Welcher, Matt Heron, Chris Prather on Wednesday. Everybody, have a safe start to the week. We will be back tomorrow. That's it. We're out of here. <laughs>